Good morning and welcome to another edition of One on One with Father Juan on this beautiful Saturday morning. I'm joined here once again with our pastor, Father Juan Manuel. Good morning, Father Juan. How are you this morning? Good morning, Eloy. How are you doing? So I'm good. good. You know, there's one thing I want to, before we get started today, uh, when I say, good morning, Father Juan, how are you? Somebody said, (laughs) you don't say, I'm fine, Eloy. You say, good morning, how are you, Eloy? So the question was, how are you, Father Juan? Well, do you have the rest of the day to talk about how I am right now? So That's t- actually one of the things that I was told that not really not everybody says, how are you doing? Because it's very polite to say, but to unpack how are you doing probably takes a lot of time. No, I'm doing very good this morning, Eloy, so I'm, I'm fine. Uh, great. Uh, you had a birthday this week, so we want to wish you a very happy birthday. How was your birthday this week? It was it was very good. So I, if you ask me again how I'm this morning, I'm older than the last weekend. So uh, it was good. It was a, a good time. And of course, um, it's, it's another year. And, uh, and I was just joking with Father Ron. I think the number that I really could be in in our family, we, we will talk about and do like a small thing about the birthdays, but I've never been like a big fan of celebration for birthday or anything like that. Because, uh, you know, you wake up the next day and you continue to do things like it's not a big deal in I, I wait, the way I see it. But I was joking with Father Ron, probably the birthday that is really a big deal is when you turn 68. Is that's the age of that the priest could retire? So that would be really a big difference because then you could retire. But anyway, no, it was a good time and enjoyed the time with with the guys in the community. So they they prepare for me a Dominican uh, dinner, so Dominican food. So it w- it was a good moment to share in and be together. Nice. So um, so you want to be sixty eight? Is that what you want? To, you, you're you're what now? 39? 39, yes. Cool. No, I have still have like too many years to go. So no, it's just uh, 39, so it's fine. Well, we want to wish you once again a, a happy birthday. and uh, we, Thank you. We're looking forward to that big 40. We'll have you, uh, what do you want, a party at Chuck E. Cheese? I think that's what we'll do for him. <laughs> I, I'm he just All right, I guess you got to be from here. So what I wanted to talk to you is uh, uh, your bulletin article this week um, oh, really? that, you, that you wrote. And one of the things you highlighted was about one about your birthday. And then there's something in here that you talk about. The Archbishop Listecki is bringing back the Love One Another Capital Campaign. And so I'm hoping if you can elaborate a little bit more about what exactly. I know you said more information is going to come about. But as a person that reads this, I, I kind of want to know what, what it is. I'm sure others and uh, want to know about what exactly that is. So for all of you, you probably remember way back... Uh, I don't remember the years, but there's like the Faith in Our Future campaign that was done uh, by Arbisho Dolan, I think it was, yes. the back then. So that's basically the, the idea for this campaign that Arbisho Listeki has, is Love One Another campaign. And it's kind of um, make a big push, uh, financially push, of course, to the church in southeastern uh, Wisconsin. So basically... Uh, Parishes are invited to think about projects or ideas that they want to run with for this campaign, and then the same same thing as the as, as the previous campaign. So, sixty percent of the of the income from from the campaign is for the parish, and then the forty percent goes to the archdiocese. So, we would each of the three parishes in the Catholic community in Central Racine, we will have to kind of think and reflect on what do we want to um, really do and focus and target ourselves. So my, my hunch, and without even discussing to anyone, is that most of the three places, there are three parishes that we have, so we probably will need to do some kind of investment in the buildings. Mm-hmm. So that that's probably what... So it could go towards the infrastructure? Well, we, we, we have to, we, yeah, we have to listen and at least uh, we'll, we'll be sharing that with the finance councils and, and pastoral councils and all that and start like thinking about. Uh, they want us to be pretty fast. I mean, I just received the letter and, and they want us to have like an idea by September 30. So it's kind of a really fast moving process. And, and they put us in the first wave 
which the three parishes, which means that we will probably start looking into more details in November and October, uh, November and December, and then from June to from Ju January to June will be the big push for for the campaign. So we need to put the teams in place and all that. So it's gonna be fun. <laughs> so if there's anything that we've ever known you to do is not to work slowly. So you're pretty fast when you come up with new <laughs> ideas and projects. Uh, are we gonna get something in our mailboxes from home or is that you still don't know the details on that that's, yet? That's the thing, I'm, I'm new in this process and, and the information that, that uh, I, I don't have much information, it's just the letter that I have, but I, my guess is that it's going to be, uh, they are going to be sending from their services directly to your home, like letters and all that. And then, of course, the pastor and, and other people uh, involved in the, in the process will be pushing all of you generous hearts to, <laughs> to donate and contribute to this. But yeah, okay. so that's the, we're going to be in the process and, and thinking. Uh, you also talk about the formation program and the registration. How's that coming along? Uh, I think it's coming along quite well. If you haven't uh, had an opportunity to register, please go online and it's all posted on all three of the website. I posted it, so it is on the website. So uh, go ahead and, and register your child. One of the things that I was going to ask, and hopefully I'm not, um, this is more for St. Richard's. Are, we do, are they doing lifelong learning? Are they? Is that program starting up somebody? We've had a few inboxes coming in about whether or not that's starting up through St. Richard's. Yes. Um, no, I'm, I'm happy to answer the question. So Christian formation is, is, of course, is coming back. And I want everybody to to be able to sign up their children for this, for the program. Um, and it's it's going very well. It's, it's, it's jumping. Uh, we have great numbers. And of course, uh, the three parishes are different and different communities and uh, different um, demographics, if, if you will. And so St. Patrick's, we have a large number of children sign up for it and, and lesser number in St. Richard's and in St. Edward's. But overall, it's, it's really a, a good, vibrant program, which I'm very glad and happy to, to, to be uh, able to participate with them and walk with the faith of the children. So lifelong learning, what uh, some of us have been discussing and, and what I've been, I've been doing a lot of listening through this process and the the reality of, of or, or the origin of, of the lifelong learning that came about was also to kind of focus on having those people who have children for uh, for the catechesis, for the programs of Christian formation, so also provide something for parents, which it worked very well for the last years, but uh, we have been discussing and seeing that that I think it is a moment that uh, that lifelong learning needs to have a, a new beginning, a new start, and of course we will do it, and I, we want to be creative about it and have um, different programs. So the answer is yes, but we want to re kind of think it, and and I heard and, and one of the one of the phrases that was used in one of our meetings or one of conversations that I had is that we have been like kind of tailoring the program to fit the Christian formation people and, and children, the families that were there, but the reality of the parish who sits above <laughs> the, the, the uh, Bogle Hall, it's, it's a different reality. And so we also need to be mindful of that. So. Yes, it, it is coming back and we are thinking and, and processing and, and trying to be creative about it because I, I do want to have it. And of course, I want to have it as strong so that members of, of the other parishes could participate, like St. Patrick's and St. Edward's, because that's the whole idea. Yeah. Okay, cool. So if you were inquiring about the lifelong learning, so watch for more information that I assume I know you guys have had some meetings and so... I'm sure there'll be some more information, but I thought I'd, I'd ask that. Question. That's something that we don't lack around here in, in it, Parish, is meetings. So we do have a lot of meetings, yeah. Yeah, you you do. I, I, I try to avoid them. But <laughs> so, uh, And then um, one of the things I, I want to make sure that we get out there is that you've talked about it and you've seen in the bulletins or I think there's been some parish announcements about the formed program and the foreign program that we're going to be launching that 
in a couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. And so Formed is an online program. And so what I think what we'll, we'll do for next week is if you tune in next week, I'll actually show a small tutorial of how you can subscribe. So I'll kind of show you how to uh, do that. And then we're going to have coming up uh, Father Juan. You know, he always has these ideas and at the click of the draw, he is going to be, uh, we're going to be having what is called a Teen Tech Sunday, a Support Sunday. And so the Teen Tech Support Sunday, if you are a teen and you want to be part of this, please uh, let me know. But so Teen Tech Support Sunday, we're going to, this is Teen Tech in the sense of we're going to help you with Formed to get people signed up for Formed. And so on August 28th and 29th at St. Patrick's and St. Edward's, uh, after all the masses, we will show you, you bring your cell phones mm -hmm. uh, and we can get you signed up for Formed. And then on September 11th and 12th at St. Richard's, after all masses, we'll have um, Teen Tech support uh, for you to sign up. We may even have uh, Mark Pantoffer uh, from St. Richard's uh, has inquired about helping. So it, it may be some adults that will help us as well that yeah. want to do the Teen Tech support. So well, we, we, we discussed it in the past that, that one of the big uh, challenges that we have with people is signing up, yeah. right? Because it's... it's uh, it's not easy, even if it's, it's the technology is out there and it's all that, but it all implies uh, different things. And for form, it's the same thing. So I did have a hard time like signing up myself. And then when I figured it out, so it was easy. But 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 yeah, so we, we would need you to have on those weekends your smartphones with you so or iPads or whatever you want to use. And then we will have... Uh, teams uh, kind of helping you navigate that and sign it up because you just go in the web page and and they give you options to sign up and of course the the, the the signing up option is you signing up as a parishioner but then they ask you to send an email and then you have to go back and it's, it's kind of back and forth it's easy but i know how can be complicated that people could get just kind of frustrated about it so but the program, I think, I think, and I, I believe, and I don't want to like, uh, since I'm a very optimistic person, I don't want to fool myself. But I, I think it's, it's, it's proven to be a good program, and it's gonna help us uh, grow and 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 use it in different ways. Uh, one of the ways that I was thinking about is like it, it could be individual, mm -hmm. like like you for your own personal enrichment that you say I wanna. Uh, watch a couple of videos and, and get more information about any any of the topics of, of our faith. It could be a family event. I mean, there are movies to be watched yeah. in family mm -hmm. uh, for children. Uh, movies for, for I I know a few of the so I them the try out with the with the men's group in in St. Patrick's in, in Spanish, and so they have even shared the videos with the family, the wife and the children. So it's it's been a good uh, tool for them to dialogue and, and communicate and then also I'm, I'm thinking about small groups discussions and conversations that could happen if people were uh, willing to get together and do that that will be also a, a good tool that will be for you for me I'm thinking like things that we could do like uh, and this Eloy doesn't know that but like <laughs> like the Catholic community wide type of study you know like let's get everyone watching an a episode of something and then coming back here and you and I, a lawyer, maybe Jose Mario, mm -hmm. and I have a conversation and a discussion about it and, and maybe also get some input from your questions and your, and your comments on, online. Yeah. Cool. Well, it's work, but it's more cool. work, but, but I'm always up for a challenge. Uh, and then finally, I, I wanted to talk in your letter. I really, I, I didn't know this and I don't know how many people are. You talk about uh, this weekend coming to the end of the bread of life, um, and what I in the, in the closing part of that I want to just to read it says, if we want to truly want to be truly disciples of the Lord, we need to be committed to follow His lead. Let us ask ourselves how committed are we to following Jesus? And it was kind of poignant when I was kind of reading that, and only for two reasons: is we, you know working with teens. I think that's a very good question to ask them because oftentimes we see them, um, you know, be confirmed and then kind of just going away. But I was hoping that you can talk a little bit more about what 
you were meaning and or what's the meaning of that because i i didn't realize that and i mean and so i want to know more about that well, so as as probably well for all of you who participated in the in the masses and especially like the early 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 July, mm-hmm. I think is when we started doing the the bread of life discourse and and I, as I told you, it's chapter six of of the Gospel of John, and it's of course it has a the Eucharist component which is all beginning with with the multiplication of the bread and the fish and how many people ate five thousand and all that. But then Jesus goes into this uh, discourse and then this talking about that he is the bread of life, the bread that came down from heaven and whoever believes in him uh, lives forever and all that. And so uh, and we are just like what we are reading is the end of, of, of this chapter. And, and so one of the things that, that, that uh, oh, the challenging thing that appears there is that, that even the disciples, and it says in the gospel, they say, they, they, many of them that were listening, they say, uh, who can accept this? Who can like take this in? So who, who, who can understand this? And then Jesus, of course, goes and, 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 and tells them, like keeps insisting on being the bread of life. And then as a result of that explanation, many of them left him. And so the only like the 12 apostles remained with him. Uh, and even it's, and it's this famous words of Peter, that he says, whom, whom shall, uh, to whom shall we go? No, that's, that's a very, like, Jesus asked them, well, are you also leaving? You guys, like, are going to let me behind? And so Peter said, well, whom shall, shall, shall we go? And, and the whole understanding, like, and what I was trying to convey is that, that if we are truly to get the gospel and, and really to live by the words of Jesus, it is a challenging thing. So the gospel is not a a, 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 a complacent thing that, that you just like come in and listen to it and, and, and you feel good about it. it. It's meant to challenge us. And then it's meant to 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 maybe sometimes even like put us in odds with, with society, with culture all the time. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's, it's not... When I talk about challenging, I, I don't talk about like something that is painful and, and that we should suffer and struggle, but it's something that, like, really to me, it's something that makes me uh, want to be better. Yeah. Uh, when, I, when I listen to the words and, and this past week, I mean, we have some Gospels that, that I really find, like, challenging, I, like even the Gospel that we read on, on, on Thursday, and I have it fresh because, of course, I have to do that day two Masses. Yeah. And I know you were there, so we did that. Eight o'clock mass in 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 St. Uh, Catherine. Catherine's for for all the teachers and all everybody involved in the CNS school system, and then also we did the nine o'clock mass that we that you all share, and the the challenge in there is like being able to make the right choice. I mean, the gospel was telling about that all these people were invited to this banquet, and everyone went to their own specific things to their farm to the business. So. They, they were doing things good. I mean, like in, like any of us would do. But then it's kind of what I found challenging is how you can see what is really important in that moment and in that time and, and decide on that and choose on that. And especially because we live in a society that is that we have so many choices and so many things that we could choose from. And, and that being mindful of making the right choice, the right decision, the right actions, it is challenging. And, and and also like even even the man also because that was the banquet and then the guy who was thrown out of the banquet because he didn't have the garment and 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 he says he was silent and again also I find it very challenging because it's kind of how many times am I able to really give a reason into my actions mm-hmm. there are many things that we just do it we just kind of I, I have habits that I fall into them like this and I like okay. If I, Jesus were to ask me, why did you fall into it? I like I would have to say I don't know, and that's not a right answer. Like, it's like like being silenced. No, yeah. it's because you know. So being able to give reasoning to our actions, I think, and our choices is also very important. So the gospel is very beautiful and very challenging, but that's what it's meant to us. It's meant to be then. Yeah. 
So we so we kind of look at it just as an opportunity for us, exactly. Rather, you know, to be challenged, and so it's not it's not anything negative. You know, um, <clears throat> you uh, you did those those two masses, and as uh, uh, you were talking today during the, anytime I hear something twice. You ever watch a movie and you are you think it's good, but then you watch it again, like ah, that's what it's about. But as you uh, were, I went to a mass. We did the mass for Siena Catholic Schools, and then we came here and we did the other mass. And the second time around, um, I'm gonna <clears throat> thinking about that. Uh, I want just to get personal on this is when I was reflecting on it. So as you may have heard on Thursday, Father Juan had um, made an announcement about. Uh, me being accepted into the uh, candidacy program for the diaconate. And as I was going through that formation, so that first year that I was in, it's, it's called aspirancy. You aspire to be a candidate. And we really weren't supposed to be like public about it. It's supposed to be just a personal um, journey for me. And But this, as we close the, the aspirancy year, and I think about, you know, the one thing that stood out to me was kind of like the journey of, of this aspiracy program where it said many are invited, mm -hmm. but few are chosen. And so like not everybody makes it through the aspirancy year. But when I was going through this formation, when I completed the aspirancy program, I came to a moment to where I had to come to an agreement of whether or not I wanted to accept the candidacy program for myself. Rather than, am I going to be kicked out of the program? It was more of a, if they say yes, if I'm willing to say yes. And by, well, I am saying yes. And so as this uh, airs, I'll ask that you pray for me because I'll be attending a retreat, a, a canonical retreat. Is that what it's called, Father Juan? Yes, it's a canonical retreat. So okay. I, I want to make a couple of comments there. I mean, it's your personal experience. But yeah, that thing about being a lot of, people being called and few chosen, it's, it's I, I, and I like how you commented, like uh, accepting your, your call, because it's really, that's the thing. It's, we are all invited. Mm -hmm. And the chosen part is because we accept, yes. because we decide to go with. So your, your year of as parent, as, as a deacon, and I know this because we, <laughs> I probably did this the, also my aspirancy again for deacon <laughs> with Eloy. <laughs> But it's, it's, it's your year was kind of a discernment that you have to change and you have to yeah. do many, I mean, like let many habits are on the side and many things that you didn't think about yourself is starting to be very honest and, and, and being serious about it, which, which that was your choosing yeah. to do that. And, and that's why they chose, you know, it's not like, oh, well, this guy looks, no, it's because you were willing to put the, the, the sweat equity for, for this diaconal program, you were put in the work, you were there and, and you were not like thinking that they was just taking for granted that you will be chosen. Yes. And, and that's the reality. And that's why like all these people who come to the, to are, are invited for this uh, wedding feast. Well, they didn't put the work. Yeah. Like even the guy who is unable to answer why he didn't like have a, a garment. So it's, it's, is being willing to put the work in is when you get like being chosen. Yeah, and so I um I, I want to thank everybody that has been praying for me and and uh, during this time I, I truly appreciate it. And so I just would ask continue those prayers. So, but uh, thank you for for that. And then finally, uh, I want to just kind of wrap up. There's other news that came out uh, in the last week or two um, about. Uh, the Vatican II award. And so, uh, wow. <laughs> and so the Vatican II award. And so if you don't know what the Vatican II award, I guess every year they give out these Vatican II awards. I think father Ron won one in 2014, I believe. I can't remember. I'm not sure. I so, love the seven, the last seven years of my life from 2012 to 2019, I was in the Dominican Republic. So, uh, okay. So but, I believe, I believe father Ron. Yeah. But one. they give out like, for the priesthood life, for the youth involvement, uh, they give also social justice. I mean, they give different awards. I, I think one year uh, Ramona Delgado yeah. had, won, had received the reward. So this year we we're fortunate enough to have another person who will be receiving the award, and so we want to uh, uh, just kind of highlight that that came back this week. So uh, the Vatican II award, Dulce. 
Contreras uh, has been given the John Paul II Youth Vatican II Awards. And so we are joined here this morning with Dulce. Good morning, Dulce. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> So, so you you got this award, and you just received notification this week uh, that you're you're receiving the award for Vatican II. I think there's a number of people at home that uh, that nominated you, so congratulations on that. So you have a special invitation to to our parishioners at, at home. So, what would you like to say to our uh, our, our people watching from home? Okay. You all are welcome to come. I mean, like, my parish and, like, this live stream and, like, our community, the Catholic community, like, it helped build every, like, it strengthened my faith. So, like, you guys are, like, very impactful to me. So, like, I, I would appreciate it if you could go. I mean, just, I wasn't expecting this. So, when I got the email, I was very happy about it. And, yeah. yeah I'm, so... So it's taken place uh, on uh, uh, September, Thursday, September 30th at 7 p.m. So there's a prayer service and awards ceremony, and that's going to be taking place at the Cathedral of St. John the Evangelist uh, in, in Milwaukee. So uh, we all are invited uh, to attend that if you are able to attend that. Uh, I believe a couple of uh, uh, will be having something prior to that, but everybody afterwards is invited to attend that. So congratulations once again, uh, Dusa, for receiving the, the Vatican, you know, for receiving that award. And uh, I think uh, you, there's so many people, I think you, uh, everybody at home, uh, you know, the, per the parish really has played a role, I think, in, in, in her life. And I think Father Juan has been very impactful. And, and a lot of Father Anthony, I mean, there've been a lot of people, she's been fortunate enough, and all of those, uh, uh, within the community that, that have done that. So so nice job uh, to you guys. I think the award of Vatican II is really a reflection of you guys. Well, that's a one proud dad. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so, uh, what, what I would say is that, uh, I mean, this is this is an award, but but uh, really what is in the church, you know, when, when you're going to be ordained deacon and when I was ordained a priest and when we are giving something, it's actually like recognizing something that is there all this uh, like hard work that you put in there all these uh, things that you have been doing just the church officially saying like dulce we notice you <laughs> we know that you are doing this and and, and also like like being ordained a deacon you have the material to be a deacon you you could be a deacon or, or when i was ordained a priest you know it's kind of that it's not a prize but it's kind of like a more like we notice you there that you are doing the ministry, doing the service. You you put put the, the effort and put the work into it. And 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 of course, for the last uh, I don't know how many months already in the pandemic, you have been very very helpful and and you have put up with these two guys, <laughs> which that's, that pro true. that's that probably that's probably that's probably the hardest uh, work of all. But uh, really, you your involvement with the youth and 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 you know that. Uh, everybody like loves you and not only that but it's like it's it's very amazing to to be able to see a young person that is that committed in the church and 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 that's we hopefully that all those who were confirmed will be that involved then we will have uh, a very very yeah, vibrant very church. church yeah yeah so uh, thanks again. Uh, congratulations once again, uh, Lucia, and congratulations to the Catholic community because I think it's a reflection of our community. This is our award. It's not just mine. It's oh, all of ours. Wow. That's, wow. That, okay, we have to close the program, so don't spoil it. Any other ones. Remember, we're, thank you very much for joining us. Remember, we're the Catholic Community Center receiving one, one faith. Day, one family. Oh, let's do it all in sync. Sorry, guys. Give her an award and look what she does, Father <laughs> Juan. Do you see that? Okay. <laughs> One faith. One, one family. family. <laughs>